Super Wild Card Weekend goes down. It started off with a great game between the Colts and Bills that came down to a Hail Mary at the end of the game. It ended probably with the shocker of the weekend with Pittsburgh getting absolutely run off the field by the Cleveland Browns. Yeah. And then in between it, we saw a lot of good football. Tom Tukul did his thing in Washington. Um, Ravens, who were very impressive, down 10-0 to come back and Lamar Jackson keep everything calm and cool. And he gets his first playoff win. We saw Josh Allen get his first playoff win. We saw Baker Mayfield get his first playoff win. What's your what's your overwhelming takeaway from the weekend, um, which is still labeled Super uh, Super Wild Card Weekend? I, I thought it was everything was cracked up to be. Um, we saw again the road teams uh, pretty much held it down on on this weekend. Even though the one where it was like you know the, the Washington versus Tampa, we kind of. No, it didn't like Tampa was the better team, but you know, obviously the way the, the NFL set up the home game goes to, you know, the, the winner of the division. So with that one, it was like, you know, we kind of all figured Tampa was going to win that game anyway, but you never know. You know what I'm saying? Any, anything's possible, especially when you got that on the front line. Um, and the kid was it Heineke that came in. He came actually, you know, he did he did pretty well in that situation to, to really be kind of thrown into the wolves, uh, so to speak. You know, he actually did pretty did pretty well in that situation, um, which is good for Washington moving forward because they they got rid of Haskins. Uh, Alex Smith says he's thinking about whether or not he wants to come back next year. But even if he does, you know, what I'm saying like, what do we really expect from Alex Smith uh, if he was to could be the starting QB for Washington? But uh, you know, outside of that, yeah, the road teams did their thing. Uh, you know, big shout out to the Browns, man, because, and, and I, and I got to say this, you know, this is something that we've been saying on the show for months now. I didn't wrote about it. I didn't, I've been talking about it. Pittsburgh was not as good as their record would lead you to believe. I've been saying it. And literally, bro, when I saw what was going down in this program, game, first of all, I put the game on. I went to the back for a second. I laid, laid down, wound up not north for a second. When I got up, it, I looked at I looked at my phone. It was twenty eight zip. I'm thinking it's the end of the game, damn there. And I'm like, oh wait a minute, it's only the first quarter. This thing got ugly really fast. And you know we saw Pittsburgh kind of back in to you know to the playoffs. They were losing a lot um, towards the towards the end of the season. I mean they did manage to beat the Browns in Week 17 without Roethlisberger, which is why I still thought at going into the game they would beat the Browns. But you know the the, the Browns came to fight. They had that they, they had the dog mentality going. They came in there to fight and they dominated Pittsburgh from, from start to finish. Um, Juju, you got to come back next season, humble yourself a little bit. And and shout out to Juju because he had a good game, but it just it wasn't enough. But you know, all the things he was doing all season, dancing on the in the and the, the you know on, on the end zone and on the logos for the teams and all of that, you know, that came back to bite him in the butt, you know, and they got smoked badly by a team who we've, we've both acknowledged as like the little brother team in the division. They came in and spanked Pittsburgh, you know. Um, I was proud of the Ravens and what they did. Lamar Jackson, he did an, an excellent job. Just the first time he, he got the win after being down. Um, I don't know if anybody could have shut down Derrick Henry the way Baltimore did in that game. I was... I said last week, if he had if if he had less than 125 yards, they'd get the win. But what was it, 40 yards, something like that he had? Man, it, it was just a great weekend for football. I agree. And I, I think the first round every year reminds us of what we already thought about these teams. As you mentioned, we felt this way about Pittsburgh for weeks. Even when they were still undefeated, we all, you know, you and I both always would say, I don't think they're as good as their record. You know, they've benefited from, from a softer schedule and, I always go back to some of those early wins where they would be in teams that they should have blown out. And yet somehow they were just scraping by to beat them. Yes. Um, the Baltimore defense against Tennessee to me was the biggest surprise because my feeling going into that game was that Tennessee had their number. Tennessee had the perfect style to beat the Ravens offensively and defensively. And for that first quarter, it looked exactly the way I thought it was going to look. Tennessee was able to move the ball. They were using a lot of play action because they knew the Ravens were going to load up on the line of scrimmage. A.J. Brown came out super hot and super aggressive in that game. And I really thought Ravens are in trouble now because this is going to start to look like last year's playoff game. And then that defense kind of just, you know, planted their feet and said, nah, it ain't it ain't happening. We're going to keep this. We're going to keep it where it's at right now until Lamar can figure out how to get us back in the game. And that's what happened. It was 10-3 until Lamar has the big run uh, late in the second quarter. 
And from that run on, you could see now it was like Lamar felt like, all right, now I'm comfortable. Yep. We're good. We figured something out. We we know what we can do now. I thought Lamar was great in that game. I thought their defense was great. I thought that was the biggest surprise of the weekend. But other than that, I thought every other game went similar to what we thought because, again, first-round matchups normally remind you of what you already felt about these teams. I thought all year that the Colts and Titans were good teams, but they were too streaky, and they both showed it. They had moments where they looked really good, but then they also had moments where you're like, you're letting this game get away from you. And it, it Colts, it's the first time in NFL history that a team has gained over 450 yards, not turned the ball over, and lost the game. The Colts had five trips into the red zone, and yet somehow only came away with one touchdown in those five trips. So they shot themselves in the foot, but that's who they were all year. That's how they lost their game against Pittsburgh. That's how they lost their game against Baltimore this year. They, they were a streaky team. The Bears are the Bears. We, we didn't expect much from them anyway. Uh, <laughs> Washington Washington was Washington. They were a 7-9 and nine team that we both felt shouldn't have been in the playoffs. And I got I to gotta ask you, Eric, how's our friend doing after that uh, Bears? He, <laughs> l- l- I got a lot of calls from him yesterday. I'm going to say that. A lot of calls from him yesterday. He, he was very frustrated throughout the game. Um, but for the most part, the teams were who we thought. And I, and I agree with Cleveland being this is who we thought. Because you and I both said when they played that game against Baltimore, that to me was their aha moment. That's where the light bulb, I think, went off on that team where they said, you know what? We are pretty good. We could hang with the better teams in this league. And as a Colts fan, I saw what they did to my Colts early in the year. I, I, felt, I already knew they can run the ball with the best of them. And if Baker isn't turning the ball over, they're going to be tough to beat because Miles Garrett gets a lot of pressure. They can, they can make, they can cause some havoc. Pittsburgh, the wheels completely fell off in the first round of the playoffs. What we were already kind of seeing, what we thought might happen, it it completely happened on a national stage in the primetime game of the first round of the playoffs. Down 28 nothing at the end of the first quarter. They looked absolutely terrible. Pittsburgh, even as they tried to fight back, I think there were moments where you felt like, eh, maybe they could get back in it, but they could never stop Baker whenever Baker wanted to move up and down the field. Whenever Cleveland wanted to score, Cleveland scored. And the fact that Cleveland only scored 48 points, I think Cleveland, if they wanted to, could have scored 60 yesterday. Yeah, and, and you look at that game and you're like, all right, if you just look at 501 yards passing and four touchdowns from Roethlisberger, and you're like, damn, how the hell they lose that game? But then you see them four interceptions on the other side of that. You basically cancel out, you know what I'm saying, what you're doing. Um, and, and the Browns were consistent. Baker was, was really good. Um, you know, it's messed up to say, but, you know, that – Losing Odell was probably the best thing that could have ever happened to them because now there's no pressure to get the ball to one receiver. He can spread the ball out to who is open or who he sees visually making making the completion. Uh, you know what I mean? So and they, and they just they, they, you're right that defense with Miles Garrett, um, one of the, one of the best one of the best play, defensive players in football with Miles Garrett on, on on that line. They did an amazing job. And I do I want to go back to the to the Colts uh, Bills game because that game was could have went either way. Uh, they were going back and forth pretty much uh, throughout the entire game. It was very close. I I like what I see from, from the Colts. I think, um, you know, because we don't know what, what Phillip Rivers is going to do at this point if he comes back for another season. And, you know, because remember, we were talking about, you know, with Andy Andy Luck, at um, with Andrew Luck at, at quarterback, this team was Super Bowl contender. So I think they're really good. Um I, I picked Michael Pittman Jr. in fantasy early, like when we had the draft. I picked him like later in the draft because I thought he was going to be good. Um, you know, he has the NFL pedigree. His, his, his dad played in the NFL. For, you know, he had a, a decent career. And if I know he played uh, running back, but once you have that NFL pedigree, you know what I'm saying, you have different advantages that a lot of other players uh, don't have. Um, and again, he started off the season banged up. So we really didn't get to get a good look at him until mid to later in the season. But I think moving forward, they got a really good wide receiver in Michael Pittman Jr. Uh, if he can just stay healthy and be on the field and depending on what they do at quarterback next season, you know, whether or not Phillip Rivers decides to come back or they get somebody in a draft, I think that the Colts can be really good moving forward. Yeah, I think uh, we're set up in position to be successful. You know, it was the miscues. It was, you know, going forward on fourth down uh, in the red zone and not converting. It was a missed field goal. It was a terrible penalty uh, by Kamiko Ture right before half where Buffalo was going to end up having to just kick a field goal to tie the game. And instead, they were able to get the touchdown. And that was another one of those plays where you saw Josh Allen kind of grow up in front of our eyes. It was a big drive for him at that moment. He makes the play. 
I'm, I'm curious to see what we do at quarterback. And I say that because I agree we need to move on from Phillip Rivers. But looking at that game, Phillip Rivers wasn't the problem. No, right? like, he has to get older. Right, he's, he's older and he, he obviously is, isn't mobile. But when you look at the way Ben played, Ben was the problem for Pittsburgh. Yes. When you when you look at Philip Rivers, you say, "Ah, Philip did enough to win the game." It's just they had a couple of miscues that if it goes the other way, I mean, if that kicker makes that it makes that field goal in the third quarter, the Colts got the ball at the end of the game, trying to win it and not tie it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I changed so, it. Right. It changes how you play that game. But in regards to Ben, his stats were empty to me. Uh, yeah, you know, 500 yards, all the touchdowns. He threw the ball 68 times. You know they. <laughs> It, it, it was all empty stats to me. And I think Pittsburgh's going to have to figure out what the next step is because early in the season, there was a lot of praise being put on this defense. And rightfully so. They got a lot of game changes on that defense. We know Minka, we know Watt. Um, unfortunately, they didn't have Bud Dupree or Devin Bush. But this was a defense that's, that's touted as one of the best in the NFL. And they gave up the amount of points they gave up yesterday, 40, 48 points. But in the second half of the season, they struggled to stop anyone. I mean, Alex Smith had a big day against them. We saw the Cowboys take them down to the wire. So this is a team, I think, that has a lot of question marks moving forward. And it's going to start with Ben to see what he can do. Um, and, I'm, and you know, I'm interested to see what they do as, as a whole, as an organization. But ultimately, I'm just happy with the games that we saw. I think we've got an amazing slate of games going into the divisional round now because I, I could see any scenario playing out with all these teams. This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants, Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Uh-huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk, we as real as you thought. Real